Oh. Okay, so 11, let me make sure. So 11 o'clock tomorrow. Make sure. No, you do. You're, you're, the, you're the chair. Good morning, everybody. 11 PD. It's about two two minutes after 10. I want to call the meeting to order. <laughs> you're passing out 20s. I'll take a couple. This is a meeting um, of the Finance Economic Development Committee. Thanks for telling me. Uh, the purpose of the agenda is just to discuss the survey. Um, I have one update that I'd like to make, and then I have really two points I'd like to discuss with committee. Um, <clears throat> I was unaware until after the meeting that we did have some returned postcards. So there were 40 utility bills that were returned from the first round and 302 postcards. Um, I've gone through some of the addresses. It looks like some of them were um, all at the wit's end. They were people that maybe registered there or had their driver's license there. Anyway, those were returned. So uh, when you're looking at the numbers, and I'm not gonna update the numbers online, or I may add the line, but uh, there were 302 postcards returned and 40 utility bills. So that would go against the total number of ballots that were allowed or that were received percentage-wise. Okay, has everybody had a chance? Jay and Linda, have y'all all, and Ray, you've all looked at the survey? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. Yes. So the first thing um, I would really, what we have to talk about today is what we do with the information and what our next steps are. And what I'd like to talk about is do we want to uh, ask the council, because this is just a discussion meeting to make recommendations to council, uh, do we discuss asking the city manager, allowing him to begin speaking with developers? And or do we want to talk about um, when the Hat Owl folks came out and did the did their feasibility study when Connolly was here? They, you may remember when we discussed, I think, an executive session and afterwards, that Connolly's, I'm sorry, that Hat Owl's job, especially with Peachtree City, had been to get a list of what people wanted, develop a request for proposal, and then go out for developers. That's something that they do for a living. And as you recall we were kind of in the middle of the process when we got with Hat Out. So what I want to talk about is, do we want to talk about developing an RFP? And do we want to talk about and recommend allowing Danny to speak with developers and staff? So those are, that's what I want to discuss. So opening the floor to Linda, Jay, and Ray. I would, I would be in favor. It's been over a year since we made that motion about Danny. I mean, I would be, you know, depending on what you guys think, Linda and Jay, you know, I would be in favor of getting Danny permission to start, you know, just talking to developers. Yeah, I'll be in favor of that. I agree. I would, I would like for him to be able to start doing that too. Because the whole point of the survey was to get something going. And we can't do that without Danny being able to do that. That's correct. I think I would be in favor of discussing this further with full council and then at that time opening up the floor to members of our city for feedback i also need i would like to i'm going to send you an email to request the contact at red pepper i'd like to talk to them a little about their findings what they think of the survey i wasn't all that impressed with it to be honest with you um it didn't really tell me anything i didn't already know um so that's kind of where i'm at right now I don't want to get too far ahead and go down the developer road until we talk as a council and open it up for public feedback. That's what my take on it. Okay, so you would not want to make any recommendations because, I mean, we don't, this is just a recommendation. It's no different than when planning and zoning meets and recommends to council to approve or deny something. So I, I'm looking for thoughts about, the council will go for it anyway. I'll be happy to give you the Red Pepper contact information, although they are not survey interpreters. They are the the back end of the of the um, putting the survey together and, and putting it up on the web, et cetera. But I'll be happy to get that to you today, Jay. Okay. What's your take on the survey, Ann? This was your baby. What's your thoughts? Um, I think it's a great survey. I think it quantifies and gives data for us to do something with. What's, yeah, but what's your feedback on the results? What do you mean? Well, we sent out to 
we paid eleven dollars, right? About eleven dollars per per response, five point nine percent response rate. Fifteen thousand people I went out to. You can't be happy with that. Um, do I wish we had more? Yes. Did I thought we'd get less? Yes. And we're right within the industry standards for a mail out survey. Well, I I would disagree on that, but I well, think no. If you go look at what the the average results are, six percent is what you hope to get if you mail out a survey. And we were right at, we're right at it. And I, I think, think if I remove the postcards and the utility bills from possibilities, I think we'd be right at 6%. I think if you gave me a suitcase of $5 bills and my own survey that didn't have leading, redundant, and, and quite frankly, some really stupid questions, and I went to Kroger, Publix, Ingalls, and Walmart and passed off $5 bills, I'd get a hell of a lot better response rates than 5.9%. And my survey would tell us some information that we didn't already know. Because all you got to do is campaign in this city, and people will tell you, it's traffic. It's traffic. It's traffic. And people don't want apartments. So my, you know, here I am just getting out of a budget meeting trying to find money for cops because we need cops in the city, and I'm told we can't afford them. And, we, and I know it's only $12,000, but it's $12,000. Is that true, Danny? Jay's been told we can't afford cops? Uh, what was said was I can't do police officers plus do infrastructure like vehicles at the same time because right. only have so much without raising taxes. And I know it's only twelve thousand dollars, but it's twelve thousand dollars. Well I mean Jay, and we the didn't learn anything from the survey. Okay, so the money spent, we got results, we have data, we're gonna run with data. Council voted to do it. So do you just want to can it? it because because we spent twelve grand we can't get back? I don't think we should have done it in the first place. But we did. I don't think we should have done it during the middle of a global pandemic. But we millions did. of people it's are losing done. their job. I know you guys you, are I so know mad you. that you got out played with Conley. You throw a temper tantrum, call everybody up here names, okay. run to them. Point mayor. of order. That's not necessary, and it, it has nothing though. to do with this meeting. And you're mad. You threw a temper tantrum, Ray gives in to you, rewards bad behavior, and we're stuck with this pile of crap. <laughs> nah, Jay, this is, that's incorrect, my friend. No, it's not. What, what happened was that the citizens of Logueville said they wanted to get involved, and that's exactly what I did. We formed the CAG committee of our citizens, and we got two of them here. Greg Peoples and Rita Arnold are here, and that's what we did. Uh, every council member, including, including the, the mayor, chose those citizens. And let me tell you, I was in 85% or 80% of those meetings, and there were some very good discussions of our citizens, and that's exactly what we did. We did exactly what the citizens wanted to do, is form a committee or a board or what have you by our citizens, and that's exactly what we did. I think the people that participated in that were fantastic, and I'm, I'm honored to call them my friends. But I wasn't allowed to attend. I wasn't even allowed to sit in the meeting because I was told I was going to influence some people. Are you going to influence Greg Peoples or Terry Parsons or Reed Arnold? Those are strong people. They're not going to be influenced by me sitting in the corner of a room. I'm an elected official. I've been doing this seven years. I get out there and work to get elected, and I can't sit in the room just to listen. Well, the reason why you were not in the room, because it was a chairman of economic development, and it was myself and Danny Roberts and, and Tim Prather. We didn't want – we wanted to have the CAG members do their thing, and we left them alone, didn't we, Rita, Greg? We, I, I probably said – I was in most of the meetings, and I've just sat there and listened. And, and that's what we did. Now, Ann facilitated the meeting. She, But you guys were the ones with the decision. Correct me if I'm wrong, Rita, or what have you. But anyway, is that correct? Okay. But, but anyway, so that's what we decided on. And, and, you know, if you had a question, go to the to your pick, whoever you picked at that time. And I'm sure he or she would have answered your questions. And that's, that's what I did. And he invited did. me to come and sit in the corner of the room. And I was told I couldn't do it. Anyway. The CAG voted to not allow you to attend. It had nothing to do with anybody else in the room. I stepped out, as did the rest of the people, and the CAG voted to not allow any additional counsel in the room. What? But not all of The majority of the CAG, I, I mean, I, I, okay, look, we can either go backwards or we can go forwards. And, and we have a survey that we pay 12 grand that we can either throw in the toilet or we can do something with. Do we want to do something with it or are we going to throw it in the toilet? I think what do you want to do with it? 
Well, as I stated in the beginning of the meeting, I would like to discuss the committee allowing the city manager to speak with the developers, make a recommendation, yay or nay to council, and to talk about if we want to develop an RFP and, and recommend that that may be our idea or not our idea or something else. You may not like me, Jay, and you may think that I threw a temper tantrum and I will take every hit for what happened and I would still do the same thing today, but I am still trying to do something with the downtown. I am still trying to answer citizen requests for restaurants and retail and the things they want to see downtown, and at least I'm still trying. You may not like the way I did it, but I have a product that the CAG came up with. The CAG wrote the questions. The CAG did the survey. We've got a survey. We have a response. I work my butt off. We've got a piece of paper. We've got results. You may think you knew and it already told you what you wanted, but we got good data. I'm proud of what the CAG did. I'm proud of what I did and I will stand by it. So are we gonna move forward and try to do something for the citizens of this town? Or are we gonna say, screw it, Let's not do anything. Move on. Go ahead and move on. Well, in my opinion, I think that we did the survey for a specific, the reason we did the survey was to find out what we need to do for downtown. Okay, we got the survey back and the majority of people won't, what Ann said, the downtown to, to redevelop, downtown to be something where people can walk, play and eat and shop. So if we take this survey and we don't do anything with it, then we are not only failing ourselves as council people, we are also failing the citizens for the majority want something downtown. Now, and I agree with the traffic. Everybody complains about the traffic, but you can't have one without the other. So if you don't want any growth downtown, if you don't want downtown Loganville to change at all, the traffic still isn't going to go away. The traffic is still going to be there. And every time we build a subdivision or every time anything else comes into the city, it's going to add more traffic. So in my opinion, I think we need to step forward and move on and take what the survey gave us and do something with it and not just sit back on our butts because we're afraid everybody else is going to be mad at us. Well, I don't care if you're mad at me. I don't care. I'm up here to help the citizens, and not just a handful of citizens, but the entire citizens of Loganville. And we're not taking any, we're not taking any questions. Uh, uh, basically, um, your voices were heard. If you filled out the survey, your voices were heard. Uh, whether it's 900 out of, what, 15,000, we can't make those folks vote. I mean, the, the messages were out there. Can you, hold on, hold on. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm, I'm speaking. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Basically, your voices were heard, and I agree with Ann. We could only we could either sit back or move forward with what we got your data from. So anyway, I'm not. Wait a minute. I am not the chairman of this committee. She is. So she decides what she wants to do. Ann Hudson. I'm just saying that we got. Okay. Wait a minute. But anyway, I'm speaking. So that's that's basically it. We we if you filled out the survey, we got it right here and we're gonna we're gonna you know, we're gonna look into it. So Jay, what are your thoughts? Well, I think you have two votes, so my thoughts don't matter. I do think we need to take this to the full council. I also think we need to open up to the public. We haven't guys, just just wait, please. We we haven't voted on anything. I'm asking Jay what you think. Do you think that we should recommend or discuss allowing Danny to discuss with developers? No, not yet. Okay. I think we need to discuss it as a full council and then okay. make that decision. And, and then what about some sort of RFP for Haddow? Uh, I, I don't know enough about that. To, I would need more information. What, what do you want to do with the survey results? Uh, I'm um, I don't know what, what, what am I supposed to do with them? I, I mean, I knew all this when you campaign and knock on thousands of doors, like you do, people tell you, you I do this. I mean, nothing surprised me. What am I supposed to do with it? I don't know. Throw it in the trash. What I do. Okay. 
It's simple. We have a traffic problem. Nobody wants apartments. That's where we're at. And 83% of people want to do something downtown. What are we supposed to do? Well, I think we need to address the traffic problem. And I think we need to uh, I talk to the council, see what the public thinks, go from there. What good's getting something downtown if you can't get there? Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything else they'd like to add? Well, and I just think that if we don't allow Danny to move forward with this, then nothing is going to happen because he is our go-to person. He is the person that has to be able to negotiate and talk to people because the council can't do it on the whole, and he's the only person that can do it. And I think... I'm sorry. And I think that we should allow him to go ahead and do this. And I think we, you know, I th think that if we bring it before the council to allow him to do this, I'm hoping that he's going to get the majority of the votes to do that. So that's my opinion. I think he, I think we need to give him permission to do that. Okay. I think that we need to decide what we want before we open the door to talk to 100 developers. I think that Danny was put in such a terrible position before. He was. And if he got eight people, if, if we opened up right now and said, hey, Danny, you can talk to developers, and he starts talking to developers, and Danny, I saw you shaking your head yes just a second ago. Um, then all of a sudden he gets people, and they say, well, what does the council want? And Danny would go, I don't know. <laughs> So I, I think it would be more correct for us to decide as a council and a, and a town hall and with input from people. Once we have hard results, then we have a town hall and talk about, you know, we have citizens that want X, Y, and Z, and we're willing to do this and these properties in play. And then we put out that RFP and we say, okay, developers, one, two, three, and four, this is what we want bid. That's what I would like to see done. I am not trying to let the horse out of the barn and get a developer here next week. Right. Well, I, 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 and I know you did. I, I, I'm not saying that you did. Okay. And, and Danny, I, I trust your, your ability to work with somebody hundred percent. And I don't think it's fair to put you in the same position again, where what happened with Conley happened with Conley. So my recommendation, if I was going to make, make a recommendation, is to wait before we start talking to developers and develop an idea, a package, per se, of what we want to go to create a request for a proposal. That would be my recommendation. Would you? I would agree with that. Jay? Yep. Would you agree with that? Yep. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> so then, would it be fair if I reported after this meeting that our committee agrees unanimously to put together the bare bones structure for getting an RFP together with a combination of survey results, potentially a town hall, some additional information to package and request what the city wants to see developmentally downtown. And then with that document, once that's in place, we can work with Danny and let Danny open it up and talk to people. Would that be a correct statement? Jay? So we're going to get the council together. We're going to talk about this next time. Mm -hmm. Right here. Come up with an idea of what we like. All right? Open it up to the public. Put it all together. Vote on it. Give it to Dan. I think that that is not possible. I think we have to decide as a council what we want, and then we can schedule a town hall. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't want to do this without additional citizen input. I think that's really important. Okay. Um, my hope would be... In the, May council, in the May council meeting, and I'm kind of working from the hip right now, I would hope in the May council meeting we talk about when we could schedule a town hall sometime before school lets out, the end of May. Maybe we can talk about that now. Can we do that? Okay. I, yeah, I know that, I know Robbie has a microphone. My initial plans was to have a committee meeting. And, and not necessarily have public input just because I wanted to get this structure down. 
I am willing to open this up. I am willing to open this up to the public if they have input about a town hall. However, I want to keep it very tight. So we're going to do 90, or is it three minutes? Is generally the rule, right? Three, three yeah. So we'll do a three minute. If anybody would like to speak, I'd be happy to listen and get any input um, with the idea. Go ahead, Danny. And before we get too far, just, let me just, because Councilman Bull and I was talking about traffic and, and I told him, I'm not, what can be done about traffic? Other than widening Highway 20, which is out of our hands, our building 78, like 316 with overpasses, traffic is going to be here forever. It's here. There's no, there's no fixing. There's no more widening Highway 78. There's 20 possibly can be widened that, you know, is being discussed again by the state. But every road that has traffic is owned by the state of Georgia. And there's not a thing that I can do other than call. That's what Jay was asking. Let's get numbers and start calling them. Um, we had a meeting this morning with one of the top area one for GDOT, and we're going to plan on putting a meeting together on May 7th to talk about putting a red light possibility at Highway 78 in Publix. But there's a lot that goes into that. It takes a lot of planning. So we're going to have a committee meeting May 7th at 1030, and it's going to be either by Zoom because GDOT official cannot meet in person, so they want to do Zoom. So I got to check the legality of us doing an open meeting plus a Zoom meeting. But either way, it'll be open to the public. But those are the things we're working on traffic. And then we got the grant study that we're working on. Um, that's going to tell us, you know, where's traffic come from? Well, I know where it's coming from. It's coming from Gwinnett. 30% uh, of Gwinnett traffic comes through Loganville, goes to Walton County to live. We know this. 75% of Walton County, people in Walton County leave Walton County to go to Gwinnett to work. Well, how do they get there? Through Loganville. So traffic is always going to be an issue. Always. And I'm not sure what we as a city can do to fix traffic other than request more red lights, which we've done. We got more turning arrows, which are, I believe, up and running now. They're timed on 78. I know we get a lot of requests about timing. We did that three weeks ago. Um, there's so much that we do for traffic that's not seen by the public. Um, because, you know, constantly I meet, the mayor and I meet weekly about traffic and how are we going to fix it? But it's a huge concern and I'm not sure what can be done to fix it other than add more roads, widen roads, because I don't see cars getting less. There's no mass transit in Walton County. I don't see one coming in my lifetime. I don't think it would ever pass in Walton County. Um... But when you sit in Gwinnett County, you're going to have traffic because they have a million people. Just think about that. A million people. That's a million cars, if not two million cars. So we hear the traffic concerns. And then when you got to look at Main Street, it's owned by the state. We cannot widen it. Why? Because there's businesses. The right of way goes to the steps of the business. So there's no other, other than tearing the businesses down and widen that road, what else are we going to do? They're talking about putting roundabouts here at 78, I'm sorry, at 20 in Main Street. Brand Road, 20, they're talking about roundabouts. But you know, they've been talking about it since 1994. And we're 2021. So um, just to let y'all know we are working on it. Can I add something on transportation real quick? Because I, I, I'm still getting the emails about the ARC study, okay? The study that uh, that are, is it costing about two, two ninety, two hundred ninety thousand, three hundred thousand. Remember now, this is a grant. This is not your money. Because people still think, am I paying for that? No, this is an ARC, Atlanta Regional Commission. It helps to be on the board. I'm on the board of that, and I, and we got, we got the grant. So this is not costing the citizens any money. Now we do have to match it, right, Danny? Sixty. 20% match. So it's not costing the citizens anything on this. So I'm still getting the emails. Why are we spending money on the on the survey, on the study? It's an ARC study. And apparently they thought that we needed a study. So they gave us a grant, 240000 So it's it's huge. It's huge. It's in, and, I, and I've called uh, the chairman, uh, Mr. Armstrong, and I thanked them for that. So remember, it is not costing our citizens a dime for the study. It's going to benefit our, 
our, our state. Is that correct, Danny? Yes, and just so everyone knows, there's so much red tape with state. Anytime you touch a state right away, you have to do a study. That's right. It doesn't matter. You have to do when the red light, at, we're talking about at Publix, there has to be a study of seven intersections. It cost of probably 30000 to the city, which Publix, you know, said they would donate 10000 towards that. So we're that's what we're going to be talking about in May. So the council will vote on that probably in June. But we are working as hard as we can to get traffic concerns. But we're can stuck I, with 78. We're stuck with 20. Can I add something on, on to the ARC study real quick? They have pledged that they are going to meet with all of you. That's part of the study. They're going to meet with the with the citizens, and they're going to have some open open meetings, from what I understand. I've, I've talked to the, some players that are going to be on this study, and they said they're going to open it up to your feedback, basically. So this is this is huge. This is a big win for Loganville, isn't? Am I missing something on, on this study, Rob? Oh, Rob, Robbie, am I missing something on the study? No, you're. No, you're correct. Uh, they're going to have a public website that's going to be up and running probably in the next month to six weeks. Right. We're actually having a planning meeting Friday where we'll outline a timeline for the project itself. But, yeah, it's going to have um, at least one, if not two, public meetings as well as a, a website that will allow uh, residents to provide feedback through that as well. That's right. Danny, is there any conflict on May 20th, Thursday night, for a town hall at 630? That's Walton County schools get out the 26th. I was looking on my phone to try to figure out. I wanted to try to do it before the schools got out for the summer. I believe the third Thursday is planning, or is it the fourth Thursday? Okay. Um, I don't see any issue. We would more than likely have it in the Rock Gym. That's fine. We would have to check with the vents, make sure it's not rented out. We're good. We're good. So, Jay and Linda and Ray, are you guys okay? I would like to go ahead and set the date now. Then we can publish it at council meeting, which will be the week before that meeting. Okay. He said at night. Jay said at night. Yeah, six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Is everybody okay with that date? Can we go ahead and tentatively set that? Okay. For a town hall at the and, Rock Gym. Uh, put a Put a note on the marquee. Say that again? Is that me? Yeah, just put a note out here on the marquee and then on that little flashy sign out there. Yeah. We'll get it on Facebook. I'm sure we can get it out. That's fine. And I'll start reading and probably maybe you and I can work on format and how we can do that to move it through, et cetera, so, it, so we get good information out and everybody feels heard. Okay. All right. Um, any questions from the floor? Yes, ma'am. Joanne. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. So Robbie's got a microphone just because so, it's on the Zoom, so we have to do it that way. My voice is loud enough. Um, all right, mine is going to be more of a statement, I guess. I just don't get what's going on because we were told through this whole process we couldn't have anything if there weren't going to be apartments. As Jay has said, as we have all said, that's not what we want. Side note to that, somebody put on the Facebook group that Ray – you have blueprints or something of Connolly and 300 apartments, and you're more than happy to meet with us. I actually emailed you. It's not going through for some reason. I wanted to meet with you about that. But that's a side note. What Danny is saying, we are. We're a small town. Our roads are never going to be big. We all know that more people are going to be moving out here. I have realtor friends. They all say that, like, Loganville, Walton County – is where everybody wants to live right now. My thoughts from the beginning on this, everybody has also said Main Street looks like crap, and it does. I'm of the opinion, instead of knocking things down, trying to build apartments, yada, 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 let's do something with Main Street. We've got the gym, which is doing good, the antique shop, which is doing good, uh, the hair salon, now that cute little, you know, wood shop and paint thing has moved in. To me, Let's get a sandwich shop. Let's get an ice cream shop. Small town stuff. Work on some green space. Uh, you know, how are we going to do it? I don't know. We wasted how many thousands on freaking studies to tell us what we already know? I just feel like I wish you guys would come at this from a very different direction. You know how the people feel. We're going to be right back, in my opinion, if we can't have anything without apartments, we're going to be right back where we started, squabbling and the whole thing again. I don't, I just, I don't get it. I'm not asking for a developer to give us a development with apartments. But we were told repeatedly listen, it not, can't happen without it. How come all of a sudden it can? 
You have to understand, people aren't trusting because of things like this. This is what's getting everybody angry. Would you let me answer your question? Sure. I can't change what you were told by a developer who is not in the picture now. Told by counsel and not throwing in the bus, Danny, but Danny as well. We were told it repeatedly. So let me address that. I told you that developers I talked to would not develop without apartments. I didn't say there's no developer out other- there. They're not. Who, who is the magic developer now that's coming out of the woodwork? Well, we were told nobody we wanted it. We were any. told Connolly was the only guy. Okay, if you can't listen, I'm hearing you, Anne. But, but what I, but, but do you believe what I'm saying? It's hard to based on what we've been told. So, but which I was didn't nobody tell you wanted that. to work with us. But, Connolly was the only guy. You're gonna tell me we weren't told that? I repeatedly? haven't spoken. Hold on. I have not spoken to Connolly. Since. It doesn't matter when. Hold on. March 18th, 2020. Okay. I haven't had an email. I haven't had a discussion. Okay. I haven't, I haven't spoken. I'm not with, doubting that. Huh? I'm not doubting that. No, I have. That what, I'm not doubting. What are you doubting? I don't understand. We, again, we were told by council, by several people, other developers, there was no other developers. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, people that have been with me from the beginning. Oh, yeah. No other developers were interested. Let me- Connolly was the only guy. And Connolly said it had to be apartments. We were told this. Come on. Joanne, that's yes. true. The only developer in 2019 was J.R. Connolly. Mm-hmm. That's the only developer that ever came to Loganville. 2018. I'm so lost. I, I don't know where you lost. Told. Because because he was the only one. Okay. Right? I can't I can't but, tell you what you were told and why. I can't where as I said earlier, I cannot go backwards. But, I can't fix anything or change anything before this moment in time right now. Okay. Okay. Is what just I, looking at Main Street a possibility? Well, that's that what, is RFP what an is. RFP is a request for okay, proposal. Okay. okay. So we're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to send out, if they allow an RFP to anybody to say, this is what the city of Loganville wants. We want cute sandwich shops. We want ice cream bar. Mm-hmm. If you would like to do that, please submit an application something to the city manager that's what we're trying to do there has been no developer that has came to me since i've been city manager that said i would do this without apartments they've all wanted some type of multifamily looks to make their money so that is true you were told the correct thing since we shut it down there has been not one single developer other than the rail yard that contacted me two saturdays after we killed it and i said Go talk to the city council because I cannot discuss it. Since then, there has been nobody that has came and talked to Danny Charles Roberts since the March 2020 when we canceled it or denied it. Since then, so what we told you is correct. There has so been why nobody. Would it be different now. I don't know if it will be different. I don't know if anybody will come. But we have to. But try. we got to do an RFP. That's what she's saying. We've never right. done one. These people have come from. J. R. Connolly came from the mayor because he contacted him. Devin Rifkin from Duke's Nursery came. Just because he bought Duke's Nursery, he came and started talking to us. But then again, but he never told us what he wanted, so that's why they canceled that in 2018. Okay. But those are the only two developers that I'd say that were legit about developing downtown. But J.R. Connolly is the only one that has submitted a plan to the city council to say, this is what I want. And it did include apartments, mm-hmm. but that's we canceled right. it. But since then, nothing has happened. And m- nothing may have happened. I don't, I'm not sure. But that's what they're trying to get the council to say is, can we have a town hall meeting, listen to y'all? We know what you're going to say. We know exactly. there's no apartments. I saying. knew y'all didn't want apartments then, right? but I worked for them. They told me to get a developer. I worked with a the developer. They told me to stop. I stopped. So we're going. if the council decides after the town hall meeting, we will come up with RFP. It will spell out exactly what we want. Hey, we want walking trails. It's we the want city's wish list. Right. It's our wish list, our citizens, our it, council. Our, right, which Danny's saying we already a know. A developer may come, a developer may, may not come. Uh-huh. Who knows? And but, if a developer comes and says the same old thing, got to be apartments. Then I'm going to say, I can tell you right now, they said no. Is there no way to just address Main Street somehow? This is and what we're talking about. Just Main here's Street. Here's the problem so that with RFP Main has to happen to just focus on our Main Street. Yes. Send out to developers for, for Main Street. How else would you do it? I don't know. Right. I mean, okay. But and I mean, I just know on. we've been spending money and, and Robbie, studies. We've got to move on to the next person. Cut off. Yeah. There's not like a Yelp page book where you just get developers for the same shop, right? Pandemic crisis on lumber and building supplies. I don't know if now is time to look at this. That's correct. Three minutes. Okay. Who else has a. 
Hi, Lori McTaggart. This is my first council meeting. Um, I wanted to make a suggestion about the Publix. Instead of a stoplight there, could we just do a sign that says a right turn only? Can we do that? Um, also, I'm grateful to know that CAG wrote the survey. I didn't know that. Um, and it sounds like, um, anyway, traffic will always be an issue. It doesn't matter where you live. It will always be an issue. It doesn't mean that we don't want growth. We do want good things for our city, and I'm glad that you're going forward and pursuing that. And I think that the past needs to be left in the past and that we should go forward. Thanks, Lord. Thank you. So to answer your question about the ride in, that is a private road from public, so they could do that if they wish, but that's would be up to them. But that wouldn't address the issue of, of of traffic concerns of you know moving traffic. That does nothing for Highway 78. That just helps the public's getting out. Yeah. But Publix wants a red light. Yeah. So if we can get their money, why not? Melanie. I just like to make things clear. Can we say that until we have had a town hall meeting and we have heard the citizens that you will not come before the next city council meeting asking for city council to take Danny's directive off. There's no reason to take his directive off till we have a direction. And I would like the public to be involved in that. Taking it off of him is gonna just lead to the whole transparency problem again. That's exactly what I just said, and I will 100% Okay, I just want to make 100% sure you sure. and I are on the same it page. It is not fair. I'm, it's not just you. It's everybody. I am not willing to put Danny through what he went through before until he has a clear path, and I can't give him a clear path until we have an RFP, and I can't get an RFP until the council meets and we have a town hall. That's okay. the order. But that was your first thing out the gate when we got here, was taking his directive off. Well, I, I said I wanted sure. to discuss it. Okay. I, Hey, Greg. Uh, how are you? Good, thank you. Hey, I was disappointed with the 5.9% response rate. I thought we would, you know, get more. I've talked to several people about that. We put in the RFP, can we put no apartments? I mean, I, I don't know what we can include, but can we get a commitment from the council or at least to discuss that? Because as you know, with the response rate, there's what? Um, I don't know what the response, 75% didn't want apartments in the yeah. They shut me off early. Um, out of the comments, there were additional 70 percent, I mean 70 entries for the comments, no apartments, no apartments, no apartments. I think it's very clear y'all are intelligent that they don't want apartments. The citizens don't want apartments. Y'all, you know, I mean, the last time we weren't open and transparent, I don't think so. We went down a road and it all hell broke loose. Y'all are very aware of that. I asked for the RFP to include no apartments. I asked for y'all to be open and transparent, which I felt last time y'all weren't. And I also asked that y'all pledge to be free of conflict of interest, uh, perceived or otherwise, uh, for the downtown area. When you redevelop, I think everybody needs to have a pure motive. And from my perspective, last time that wasn't the case. So to close, I think that for the sake of the citizens, can you put no apartments in the RFP? If you don't get a developer, you don't get a developer. The worst thing can happen is nothing's done. But I mean, you want to pour, you talk about traffic being an issue. So let's pour gas on the fire. Let's just say hell with it and make it that much more of an issue by putting 340 apartments. We're, we already have the apartments. There's going to be a nightmare right by the high school. I mean, ask the uh, police officers, ask public safety. Jay's going to need a lot more police officers to, to manage that right by the high school, all those apartments coming in. And the last thing we need, I mean, look at all the rentals around here. It's a proven fact. Rentals bring crime. I mean, that, that's not, that's a fact. And Greg, I'll, I'll take, I'll take your question. <clears throat> so we have 83% of, at first, I understand and agree nobody wants apartments. Okay. I, I hear it loud and clear. I think we all do. All right. What I, what I don't know how to handle and what I don't know how to address is, as a council, 
I, let me let me take one step back. I don't think most people mind owned lofts, owned condos, owned townhomes. Does everybody in the in the room would they generally agree with if you had a row of forty townhomes that were owned? That's not an issue. I grabbed forty out of the sky. That has nothing. <laughs> But ownership is not as much of an issue for most people as rentals. Is that a is that a correct statement? That seemed to be correct from the CAG. Yes. On a minimal number, I think right. that's probably accurate. Wait, wait, wait. The the problem is, as a council legally, we cannot state when we approve or deny development no. whether it's rental or owned. So here's here's my quandary, right? If I end up with 30 lofts above everything in Main Street. If I write an RFP that says no residential or only lofts or only townhomes and they want to do it, but then they turn them into rentals, have I just screwed the pooch because nobody wants rentals? Do you, do you, do you see where the, I, I don't, I understand nobody wants a 600 apartment. Nobody wants 300. I get that. I completely understand. I don't know what kind of fish we're going to catch if we write I, my if we write absolutely no living space, no uh, no lofts, no townhomes, no apartments. What I would like to do with the RFP is put the survey with it. Put the town hall feedback. Here's the RFP. Here's the town hall survey, or here's the town hall feedback. Here's the survey. Make it work. It's not my responsibility to find the funding as a developer to make it work what the city wants. We right. want to find a good fit. I just know when you try to build a house or you try to do a deal, the more absolutes that you put in there, like the, the harder it is. So yes, I would like to probably say no apartments, but it's the rentals I think that are the big issue, not, not as much not as much if we had 50 townhomes. Does no, I agree sense? with you. I just think okay. the number, I think the number overall, and I think that the main issue with the residential units in and of itself is the adding to the traffic and, Agreed. you know, all that. So I think that, um, you know, I've said from the beginning, a few um, single fee owned homes, uh, I think that's okay, or townhomes like we discussed, but I think there there has to be a cap on that. I, I don't think that we can have an open ended, you know, say fifty. But um, I, I just think that if we don't address it at the front end, I mean, y'all are going to have to hear about it. I mean, you know, because right. I mean, look at what happened last time. But I do think that uh, I would hope that y'all could be open and transparent because I think that caused a lot of the ill will last time. I think the perception of you know a potential conflict on multiple levels. I think the, just the adversity from the beginning, uh, you know, killed the deal. And I agree. So I think that I'm not speaking for me, but I talked to a lot of people and a lot of people talked to me, but I think if you could put an RFP together with a limited amount of residential units, be I that think, 40, 50, right not 340, not 800, um, and I think that you see the rentals coming into the area. I mean, right. I, I think that you can perceive and, and see that that's going to be a problem. It's going right. to be a problem long term. Ask Jay. Ask Jay what the public safety thinks about the 340 units coming up by the high school. Okay. It's going to be a major problem. And that's just the tip of the iceberg unless you all do something about it. It's up to you all. So, and then, you know, if you all don't, people just be raising hell like they are now. So nobody likes to do that. Well, not everybody. Well, just real quick, segue. Show of hands. Hypothetically, please don't take this. I'm just talking out loud. I just got out of a budget meeting. My head's still swimming. If, 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 if we had to raise taxes to hire two police officers, can I get a show of hands who would be okay with that? So about $10 a month for every citizen. Yeah, well, that's what it would go for. Okay. Okay, thanks. Sam, we're going to do it. Just want to show it. I'm going to do this at town hall. <laughs> you can't segregate tax money just for police. It, it would go in the general fund, but it would be used for that. Yeah. So let me just, I don't want to get caught in a lie. General fund goes in the general fund, and it's spread out through general fund. We're getting off topic, but. I didn't mean to do right. that to you. So I just want to make sure you all understand that. And, Greg, you're 100% right. If it was up to me as city manager, I would say RFP for city-owned property. And what we get is what we get. If we don't get nothing, we don't get nothing. 
I'm not going down this road again unless they tell me to. One of the ways you control what comes in, and I don't know if you can include this in the RFP, is you control through zoning. We don't have residential zoning on our Main Street. And as a matter of fact, when I think about Main Street, I don't think about, oh, let me go where there's a bunch of rental houses or townhouses or anything. We think about walking trails and things like that. So how much residential zoning is on Main Street? It's not that they cut me to. <laughs> it's not on the uh, areas where we're looking to develop, like the property we're on now. This isn't residential. You'd have to rezone that. It, the 3.17 acres, those aren't residential. Yeah, Main Street has residential. Yeah, yeah it does. It's the whole Main Street? Whole Main well, Street I know where district. Mark lives, but... The whole Main Street District does, yes. Yeah, the Main Street Overlay District. Has okay. Residential. Oh, with the Overlay it's District. It's percentage of retail and, yeah. and residential. You know, Tim, is it like three to one? Or So it's three retail for every one. I'm, yeah, three retail for every one Square residential. Feet. Well, if you go back to the LCI study, when I was on the DDA, we did the thing, and like Ann was saying, we had the residential with the lofts over the top. I don't think anybody had a problem with this, a concept like that because we were limited to six lofts. You're not looking at 40 townhouses or things like that. Right. But if those were apartments, if those six lofts were apartments, would that be a problem? If there's only see, six, that, that, I'm, I'm just you know, saying, that's what I'm saying. There's only six, not 40, not 50, not 100. Not right. And that's my issue, Greg, to your question with saying absolutely none. I mean, do I want a behemoth? No. Do I, do I mind six loft apartments over retail? No. I mean, we're, I, I completely agree. But I'm just I'm trying to be very clear why I didn't say I absolutely wouldn't put I would say no apartments in the RFP. And that question, that question, that question is why? Because I think there is room somewhere for a live, work, play with lofts and stuff above retail. I love that idea. Well, I think we it, don't want to switch it into even uh, play for there to turn that six into three hundred. I completely I agree. Completely, completely agree with you. That's all I'm asking. Okay. It's it it's already in the zoning. Yes. It's in the zone right. as a cap. Yeah. Okay. I just want to be really clear, so I'm not vilified later for saying, you know, Hunsinger said she wouldn't not put the apartments in. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, I think it, 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 we. I think we still need to go back to the idea of of needing people downtown to make business viable, and and I don't know how many how many the magic number is, but I think as part of an RFP, it may, might make sense to to try and get feedback from potential developers if 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 they say I'm not going to bid on this, you know, we we can ask them to tell us why. What what would make this what features or factors would make this more attractive to you? And I think part of what we're going to hear is we need pe we need people so downtown. Like a counter to our RFP. Right. Yeah. And it might not be apartments. It might be a parking deck. Right. Um, so if, if, in fact, we don't get responses, at least we'll know what would be required to get responses. And if we're not willing to do that, then that's fine. And, and we, we live with what we have. Um, but I think that, uh, that getting an answer to that question of, of – how do we make how do we get enough traffic and, and people downtown to make the businesses viable for you know um, 12 hours a day seven days a week instead of just evenings and weekends it has to look better no, I mean, right I right. right and that's hopefully something had out with their experience because i mean we've already we talked to them about it when they were working with Connolly and doing that first study that if the Connolly thing didn't go through could they walk us through it in the future sometime? And they said, that's something they absolutely do. I mean, Haddow Sr. teaches at Tech. I mean, and right. has, he's, he's got a huge reputation. So he's the guy that when we take the RFP to him and what, what the city and the town hall, what we all want, says, okay, look, this may be what you want, but if you want to get somebody to do it, you need to have parking. So along right. what you're, exactly what you're saying, if we have a professional that can work with us on it, we can kind of tweak it and, maybe even bring it, you know, bring it back to, to council and say, okay, which is what we would do. We, you know, we'd give it to Haddow, they'd write, they'd give us feedback. Then we come back to council and say, okay, we want to tweak it here. You know, I mean, it's, it's yeah. a, it's like an offer, right? On a house, you kind of back and forth. Right. So I, I totally hear you. And just on a, quickly on a, a separate topic, maybe with DOT, if we tell them we're redeveloping downtown, there's going to be a lot more traffic. Maybe it's time to reroute Georgia 20. 
So it's not coming through that. Main Street. Yeah, we tried that. <laughs> we tried it, and we were getting positive traction. Um, but then, you know, you got you know, we're you we're, we're going to have four lane divided highway coming into Loganville. Georgia 20 eventually. We're going to have four lane divided highway going south on 20, and we're going to route it through a <laughs> narrow main street for the rest of our lives. That's, that's ridiculous. Just an opinion. I think we started this out in early, no, 2019, December, with the town hall. And here we are going to have another town hall. I agree with you. I think we need, we, whoever does it up, maybe your committee, in to do some research, dig into what is viable, what the vision is, what the developers will come do, get all that put together and maybe come up with two, three, four visions, have a town hall or put it in the newspaper or give it to the Facebook, we'll take it, you know, let the citizens know what can be done before you ask them what they want, because what they want may not be viable. And then you get into this battle back and forth. I want this, and I want a steakhouse, and I don't want any more chicken. And I tell them what can be done. Be honest, above board, do your research, do your homework, then tell them what can be done and give them those options, period, the end. Uh, people can handle the truth a lot better than they can handle the games back and forth. And that's what's got us in all this problem right now. There's no trust from my vantage point, which is limited, mind you. Uh, and so now when something is said, it's like, hmm, I wonder if that's true, or I wonder if they're going to go behind the scenes and have Conley come in, or wonder if Conley's already here. Uh, and that's no good for this city. We have completely, these actions have, com your actions have completely divided this city. We now are battling, battling each other. Friends are no longer friends. I mean, it's just been a nightmare because Nobody had a vision, and it's just been going back and forth, and who this and who that. And after I'm learning more and more, and I, Danny and I have talked, I think Danny, I owe Danny an apology. I think he got screwed in all of this. He worked his tail off, and I blamed him for that, for taking control of everything. He knows on Facebook he was blamed more than y'all were blamed. I have since come to find out he was acting under complete and total direction of city council who didn't stand up and defend him when he was being blasted on Facebook. That's horrific, I think. So I personally, publicly, am right now apologizing to Danny Roberts for everything I attacked him on Thank when you. he was just following your orders. Thank you. And let me just address that because, Thank yes, you. in 2018, the council did have a vision of downtown to get a developer, and we, that's what we did. We went and got a developer, and, you know, we disagree on some of the things that they want to do versus what we want to do, but at the end of the day, it, it is the developer's money. The only way to get what we want is if we pay for it, and that's what I told them, but I don't see us paying for big development, but somewhere we got to meet in the middle with a developer, and I think you're right. We, we do have a vision. I have a vision, but... It's not the same as the person that holds the checkbook was the developer. So we got to find that right person. And, you know, like not to say the library may be the first one we do. I mean, I never do a library. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I work at their pleasure. But you know what? January of next year, it may change. You may have four new people up here with a different vision. So we do are limited on what we can do, and it is at their discretion. And, you know, people's opinions change because I can tell you everybody wanted a downtown development and then it got where we don't want development leave main street alone so opinions change always and we just have to do what's best at the time that we do it so thank you patty but you know go ahead patty i'd like to answer your question about bringing up like four different ideas of what we can do <clears throat> and we talked about this in the cag as well so i think rita and greg can probably back this up it's it's really hard to give all the things that you could do because there's so many factors. The land is one of it, like what has to be done, excavation, like what can the land hold engineering wise? Who's gonna pay for it? 
It's like having a, break, bl a blank piece of property and asking an architect to give you all the ideas or four or five different plans on what might happen here. I, I don't know what the temperature is except for the survey with using tax money, which I personally am against using tax money for private enterprise. I don't think that that's how it should be. So that when people want an ice cream shop, Joanne, to your point about an ice cream shop and stuff downtown, and even chicken joints, because because I know, Lori, you may, I don't know, Lori, if you know this and, and anybody here, like the council can't decide if there's eight chicken joints or 30. You know, we can't we can't say no more car watches, no more vape shops. If it, if a business comes in and gives Tim a business license and they give a check to planning and zoning, they can open. So I I think it's really a challenge and it would cost money to come up with plans on what might happen that nobody ends up wanting anyway. I so I hear what you're saying, but I think there's some financial challenges to doing it and say pick A, B, C, or D with what you want because it's likely what you end up with is n none of A, B, C, or D, and then everybody feels like they weren't heard again. Get the, get our microphone. I can't. Sorry. Uh, is, there any, is there any way, Anne, that you can come up with some viable options? For, I just threw out for two. Uh, that you've talked to the developers and they said, yes, we can do this. And, you know, I think that's definitely doable down the road where you say, you know, these are our final two plans. But I thought that you said it would be great at the town hall if we could have four options. And I think that's premature. Oh, I think it's, pre I think the town hall is premature. Okay, I just wanted to address your question. I think that's rushing it. I okay. think you need to do your homework, research what you can okay. and cannot do, and then have a town hall, which may be a year from now. I don't know. Right. Thank you. We can do anything we want to do on the land we own. Right. We they control the zoning. Right. 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 Yes, we know. I, I but mean, here's if, the here's the issue. So, like, let's say we wanted to deal with this property, right? So we want to develop this property and. Let's say we find a developer that will do the restaurant retail mix that we're talking about with the dog park, similar to what Terry drew, like Terry Parsons drawing, which was a great drawing, okay? Where do we go? Where does City Hall go? Oh, well, I think Terry's drawing there is City Hall. Well, okay, but, but let's say that we get a developer that wants the whole piece for restaurant retail. I, I, hang, hang, I know you're the hang on, Greg. So, Let's say that this piece gets developed. It's it's like playing, what's the, is it Tetris, like where you start moving pieces around? Yeah. That That's really the challenge. If you need to move A to B, which is, which when developers were coming up, and, and this was a question last night on Facebook that I was answering, why do we go to precision planning? Because we had developers that wanted this space, so City Hall needed to go somewhere. So we were talking about a City Hall concept. But I... Who's going to pay for it? Who's tax money is going to pay for it? Developer money is going to pay for it? What does this look like? What are the, there's so many variables that us saying what we want as a city, as a combination of the survey and a town hall, does the least amount of financial outlay for the city and puts the onus on the developers to come up with the ideas for us. We're working together. They're like, well, no, it's the fall. Correct. Exactly. But that's not an expertise I've got or anybody on the council's got. That's that's our engineers and our surveyors and all those folks. So, Greg? I was just going to say, uh, Kag, we did discuss four different, um, uh, like, concepts, right? And we went back and forth. Uh, the majority voted not to include it. I was not in the majority. I, I thought to... Uh, get an idea of what you're speaking to, get an idea on the front end in the survey of possibilities. Um, some of that had to do exactly what Ann said, the feasibility of it. And I think that's where it goes back to uh, a survey. You can have all your wants and desires, but if you don't have the feasibility of it, I think that was the main issue and that's why it wasn't included. And so that's uh, to piggyback off what you said. Right. Right. I don't care what happens as long as there's no apartments. 
Yeah, I think you've got to, uh, we, it's, it's time for us to, to develop an overall vision and, and to put that forward in the, in the RFP and not, um, you know, we want retail here and we want residential here, but, but to say here, here are our must haves, you know, um, we want no apartments or we, we want no multifamily housing. Um, you know, we want, uh, we want retail space, uh, but just general, uh, and, and then here's our, here's our zoning. And, and what could you, what, is, what would your vision be for achieving our must-haves and our wants? And if, if it's not possible, what might we change in order to make it possible? Um, um, I'd also like to say, you know, I, I'm a member of the Loganville Development Authority Board, and um, I'd like to ha us not to forget that that organization might play a part in, in, in its ability to issue debt or uh, to take on whatever role it can take on to help facilitate this. So we'd, we'd love something to do. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Well, it would be almost you'd have the development authority lead this because, you know, the, the, any developer is going to want some type of tax incentive. Right. And that comes directly from the, from the development authority. Right. Because okay. the land would go into the development authority's name and then they would rent that to the developer but guess what development authorities don't pay taxes school tax accounting tax or city tax so that helps the right. the business offset taxes for five ten whatever 20 years that's something that we were going down the road with connie but then it stopped we never got that far so yes you're right so the rfp is this is what we want we want a restaurant we're not saying this is a type of restaurant because you can't do that we want a restaurant no apartments but we're open to loft style at the zoning that we currently have, which is four to one, 25% residential, 75% uh, retail. And this is the land we have. We don't want to touch city hall because people, I never wanted a city hall, but I was blamed for having a city hall. The only reason this city hall was going to be new is because the developer wanted this 10 acres of land, you know, I wanted to develop the front parking lot, retail, share the parking lot, less developers got to pay. We could cut the whole wing off on the left side of the school because we're not using it. That could be developed. We could use this wing or we could move wings and they won't road furnish. There's a mixture we can do, but you got to have the developer want to do that. So the RFP is right. We will send our RFP after the town hall meeting and maybe y'all sign a public committee to meet with me. That could be an option and then have buy-in but here's the thing the thing that i have a problem with was the trust and i've already told patty this the trust because y'all met in secret well when you work with the developer the developer's not going to come in and says here i am i'm going to buy all your property oh and by the way don't go up on it on your on what you want to sell for it but if we start with city property that's a little bit easier because we control the price but when he starts developer starts messing with private property that's why we meet with him and don't come out and say hey um, Janice, we're, we're looking at developing your property, and by the way, this guy is a billionaire. Well, guess what? Her property's going to go up so much that he's going to back out. That's why when we meet developers, it's not in a public meeting like this, because if I own land on Main Street, I'm like, huh, my price just went up. And then guess what? Developers walk away. Sure. Y'all, the RFP can be anything the city council wants. Anything. We might not get nobody, and that's fine. City, Main Street will stay like it is. So, well, and to piggyback off of what it, what Danny said about being in secret, there are only two reasons that a city council or a governing body can go into a private session that's not in the public. Three. One is human resources. What's the third one? Real estate. Real estate. Uh, legal. Legal. Sorry, legal. There's three, and that exists for those reasons. So when we met in executive session. We were completely above board in doing so. So, any other? Oh, one more, sorry. Okay. Um, I've got one question. Okay. And I know that from everybody that I've spoken to, the biggest question is, is why is this property not developed? Uh, we can put an amphitheater right out here at the rock, I uh, mean, behind the rock gym. We can put a parking deck behind the rock gym right out here that City Hall could use for parking. You could put the library right here in the front section of City Hall. 
all your problems solved at one point in time. And right. I guarantee you more of the city people would go for that than what you're being planning right now. And guess what? That was one of the concepts we did was put the town, moving town green from there to here. But here's a question. Say it's five, the parking next $5 million. Mm -hmm. Are y'all going to pay for that? I think the city taxpayers would rather go for that than some of the things that you're doing right. now. At least but, it would be transparent. Right. But it's easier to say that you would pay for it when you don't even know how much taxes you would go up. Taxes would go up probably double. And I, the 15 people in this room may say it, but the other four, 5,000 is going to be upset. So, yeah, we talked about that, but we don't want to raise They never want to raise taxes. I can attest to that. I've been here 30 years in October. I have never had a council say, hey, let's raise taxes. But for the amount of money we would have to raise to do that would be extraordinary. Well, the, the, the other question is, is how you're going to pay for City Hall if it's $40 million. Well, it was never $40 million, but Well, I mean, well, I've heard comments. Right, there's been $60 million, $40 million. I, I got. I mean, how many million? I mean, have, was, we have we a were price at on the new city hall for for the library and for the city hall. Okay. Yep. That would have been paid through a bond. Okay. Yep. And it is a lot of money. I have a easy question. When I moved to Loganville, the uh, downtown wasn't in bad shape. I've been here eight years, and it looks horrible. Why on God's green earth are the owners of those businesses not being held liable? If my yard looked like that, I guarantee you, within five days, I'd have the code enforcement at my door. That is a mess down there, cardboard, boarded up, paint peeling. I mean... It, it just looks a mess. So that I, one building is in violation, and they are they do have a building permit. But when it, you know if your house is not painted, I cannot enforce that. Just like I can't force it on. Okay, thank you. Have you looked at a black tax? It cannot be used for unseemly property. That's what it says. But a black tax, huh? Do you know how much money the city would lose if we did a black tax? A black tax, we would well, just go look at the ordinance and, and look at it. We would lose money, and for the next, was it four years, they get 50% reduction in their tax rate. After they fixed it. After they fixed it, yep. But I can't make them blight because it doesn't look nice or because it's not painted a certain color. I don't know why they do that. I don't own the property. If I could tell them what to do with their property, I could tell you what you could do with your house. But if I park my car mm -hmm. in the grass, right, I get written up by code enforcement. Right. But there's no grass they're parking them. I know, but what I'm saying is if I'm getting ridden up because I've got my I've got a party going on, which I don't, but they're parked in the grass. <laughs> right. I'm a widow. Yeah, it's not that exciting. Um, I get a silly citation for that, or if my dog barks too loud or things like that, but you're trying to bring developers into that and I would walk away. If somebody if I inherited three hundred thousand dollars and wanted to put an ice cream shop I guarantee you I wouldn't put it in Loganville. I would try to find a place that looks a lot better down in Monroe. But legally, we have no authority to tell a building how it should look. Can you not, in our city ordinances, can we not? That's one thing we've never had in this city is a standard. We, we do have architecture. Like to, we have Lake Bill County and all that. Yeah. They have a standard. Where we have an architecture work. standard for Main Street, and but I cannot make retroactive for other retroactive. properties. Okay. Right. So these buildings were here before city, you know, before any of us was born. I can't, you know, people say, oh, just go do it. Well, I had to follow the law. We have offered them grants. to uh, Right, we have offered it, and we've had zero bites because. What do you mean the deal? We allow them to use it. We could, but that, you know, we try not to be. But they're not doing anything to help the city. So really right. No. That's, that's up to them. But, you know, yes, they could put them out of business by not letting them use the parking lot. Robbie, you need a mic. Right. Oh, Bobby. It's behind you. Okay. Have you seen 
money. Yeah, sorry. The businesses don't own most most instances. Businesses do not own those buildings. So if we tried to rent out the parking lot, we would be punishing the businesses, not the property owners. Yeah. Um, I have one final question for the rest of the committee. Would everyone here support a town? Does everyone here support and would vote y yay, yay, for a town hall and an RFP with the idea for an RFP to be developed? You would? Jay, would you? Okay. Ray, you would as well, right? Yes. Okay. Um, no other questions? Everyone have a really great week. Thank you very much for coming. You gotta make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. All opposed?